Hey folks, welcome to Hero Press Tip of the Week number 50. That's five zero. Feels like a cool milestone. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to compress JPEG files, images, to make the file size smaller so your page loads faster. This image we're looking at here is, from, is of Grand Rapids, Michigan. I took this photo from the top of my apartment building. This photo is 2.5 megabytes. You can see that here in Finder, right there. And I'm going to show you some ways to, to make it smaller and still look good. The first thing we're going to do is use a web tool because it's quick and easy and it's everywhere. It's on the web. I use this all the time. Uh, we'll go to Upload Files and find my image. And it's right here. And out of the box, they suggest compressing it 54, 54%. No, quality 83. So let's talk right now about JPEGs and what quality means. JPEGs are what's called a lossy format, which means as you compress them, you remove data to make the file size smaller, and that reduces the quality. And so we compressed this one by 54%, and it went from 2.4% or 2.4 meg to 1.1 meg. And we can slide this back and forth and look at the difference. And there isn't that much of a difference. Look right here at this building, and you'll note that the color changes just a little bit. So that's not a big loss. If you're going to put this image up on the web, people probably aren't going to notice. But you'll note there's a slider here. The quality comp of compression goes anywhere from 0 to 100, where 100 is no compression. And you'll see it's 2.4 megstone. 0, or 10, is crazy compression. And you can look at the sky. And the sky, the skyline and the river, the river's all blocky. It's horrible. And so the trick with JPEG is to find the best number that still gets you a usable image. Personally, I like 40. Here, let's just type it in. Now, I picked this image specifically because skies are really hard to deal with. Um, let's see. Can we zoom in? I don't think we can zoom in with this tool. Um, but uh, this, the detail on this in particular is losing some quality at 40. The building, this little building is still losing color. Um, oh, you can drag this around. So I was talking about how the sky can cause trouble. See how there's this loop of color? Now, when it's zoomed out, that may not be there. Um, so let's go up to 60. Now you remember 54% was uh, 1.1 meg. We're down to 663 kilobytes here. This is five times smaller. The sky doesn't look too bad here. I mean, the color's a little different, but if you don't have the comparison, the sky looks fine. So we'll go with this for now. So I'm going to apply, and now I can download up here. And I'm going to call this one... Optimizilla. And now you can see the difference. Um, Mac thinks it's 600K compared to 2.5 megabytes. So the next tool I'm going to show you is called the GIMP, the GNU Image Manipulation Program. Here, let's take a look at the web page for that. It's at GIMP.org. Um, it wants to be Photoshop. It's not, but it is very powerful. And it's free. 
and I like it, and I use it all the time. Um, all of these pictures were done with the GIMP. People who are good at it are really good at it and can make things like this dragon. I'm not that good, but I can compress images. So let's open this one up. And we're going to convert the RGB working space because the GIMP doesn't like apples, but it doesn't really change anything. So there we are. There's our picture. And we are currently zoomed out to 33.3% so that we can see the whole thing. But if we go to 100%, you can see there's the sky. And it doesn't have that banding. But if we go to 400%, you can see there's what what it looks like just out of the phone. Um, you can see these little artifacts on the horizon, things like that. Um, so let's go back to 33%. And we're going to do file, export as, give it a new name. Cash. GIMP, hit export, and then it's going to want us to choose a quality. Get this over here. And the quality dragger is right here. And the default's 94%, which doesn't really do much. There's a checkbox right here that says show preview in image window. And so at 94%, it's a three meg, it gained. We don't want that. So we're gonna grab the slider. I'll go down to 40 like I like. There we go. So there's 40. It doesn't look too bad. If I uncheck, it should go to the original. Recheck, still looks great. Now let's go to a 100% zoom and Ah, you can you can start to see some banding here, and that's what we didn't want with Optimizilla. Let's go to four hundred percent, and it makes the banding much more visible. You can see it right here; these colors are changing. Um, let's turn that off for a sec, and watch watch. Uh, Watch this tree line. I'm going to turn it back on while you watch the tree line. Can you see it change? I'll turn it back off. You watch there. So it smooths it out a little bit. So I didn't like the banding I saw, so I'm going to go up to 50. And turn it back on. And we will go back up. It's a tiny bit of banding, but I'm only seeing it at 400%. If I go to 100%, it looks fine. So let's save this one. Now this one says it is 885K. So Optimizilla did a better job than the GIMP. But now I'm going to show you another trick. The GIMP can actually change the image size. So let's go to image scale. Now this image is 4,000 pixels wide. The chances that you want that on the web are very small. The only reason you'd want that is if this was an art piece and you were selling it or something, or it needed to look perfect. This is just a picture of my city. I'm gonna put it on my blog. It's gonna be at the most 1024 wide. So I'm just gonna set it at that 1024. And when I click height, it does it itself, 768. So then I hit scale. And so that's 100% right there. And so now we do file, export as the GIMP 1024. And we'll leave it at 50%. Turn it on, the preview off, turn it on. I can't tell the difference at 50%. In fact, I'm going to go down to 40. Because how about we can't tell the difference at 40 either? Nope, 
I can't tell the difference. So we hit export. And now we have an image that is 81 kilobytes. Now, when you upload this to WordPress, WordPress is going to make four different versions. Uh, this will be full size and probably also large, but the medium one is going to be half this size and it's going to be 40 kilobytes. So we went from 2.5 megabytes down to 81 at full size. Um, so, I mean, it's up to you. You can leave it at full size and WordPress will still make it small versions. Or you can do it by hand and get something that you know you really want. The last thing I want to show you is uh, what Photoshop does. I don't have Photoshop, but when you want to save an image with Photoshop, you can have it bring up four different versions and do different JPEG settings. So you have the original, you could set this one to 80%, this one to 60%, this one to 40%. And just get a visual comparison of all of them at the same time. You can even choose to save this one as a PNG instead of a JPEG and compare quality and file size between the two different file types. It's really slick. I really like it. Uh, I wish I had a tool that did that that wasn't Photoshop. Um, this uh, this post does another uh, also does an excellent comparison of um, image quality. If you look. Um, yeah, let's look at the handle here. The difference between maximum and low. Low has a bunch of artifacts in the blue around the sides and stuff. So that's it. Um, for quick and easy compression, I recommend Optimizilla. I use it all the time. It seems to have done even a better job than the GIMP. Um, but the GIMP gives you a lot more flexibility for, for managing your photo, for sizing it, for cut, cropping it, for um, changing colors, all that kind of stuff. So if you really want to get into it, get the GIMP. It's free. It runs on every platform. Go for it. Um, if you have Photoshop, that's probably your best bet. You're going you're gonna to get to um, save it with this uh, multi-view, and I highly recommend it. Hope you find this useful.